So I have a little treat for you today. Some eye candy. I'm going to call it eye candy because that's what it is. In this bag, I have some really nice old pens. Uh, I got a call or an email the other day and saying what, uh, what I'd like to drop by and look at some old pens that a, client, a customer had gone into a, the bookmark. and She was wondering if there was anybody they knew or if they could help her get a, some pens she had found uh, working. And these pens belonged to her mother, uh, and she had, they were sitting in a closet for years, and she looked in the box after, you know, it, sitting in her, her closet for years, and there were some papers and other things, and then she found a little bag, and in it were these pens. And so, I'm going to try to get each one working for her. Um, my hobby is you know, fountain pens, but also I love to, to work on old pens. I'm not a professional. I don't consider myself a nib smith or anything like that, or a nib meister or, or things like that. But I do love, you know, fixing up old pens. It's part of the hobby that I love and I keep tinkering and working at it. So these pens don't need a lot of work in most cases, as far as I know, but we'll find out as I work on them. So the first one I'm going to pull out, I'm just going to randomly pull out is this absolutely stunning waterman. Like, look at that. That is so beautiful. Silver cl clip, silver band here. Um, sort of a chevron or a, a crossed pattern, that triangular uh, pattern all throughout it. Celluloid. Interesting how it breaks right here. There's a when you rub your finger on it, you can almost feel a seam. So I don't know if that comes apart there also. I'm going to look up the history of, of online too and try to get the exact identification of what each pen is. I know the brand. I have a rough estimate of the period. So this is a Waterman's, made in Canada. And lovely gold nib. Uh, this feed is like actually identical to a, a, a feed of my Waterman 513J. And uh, it's in excellent shape. I'll clean it all up. Um, pr first thing I'm going to do is try to get the section off, see how the latex sack inside is. It, I, I'll, I know it's probably ossified and crumbly, and I'll clean all that out. Check and see how the... Um, lever bar works inside but the fact that this is in good shape kind of makes me think that everything else inside probably is you know still serviceable but if not i'll see what i can do to find parts <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm impressed by the how how nice the condition on these pens are they don't need a lot of cleaning um they're truly beautiful i love it and if you, uh, anybody out there has um, any inf uh, information about the exact model of this pen, I'd love to hear. It, it helped save me some time, and I, then I can go from there and find out. I noticed there's a few little teeth marks right here from somebody biting on the cap at one point. Uh, and that's probably the only spot right there I can see any little marks on the on the body of the pen. There's, you know, as you look at it, of course, there'll be micro scratch scratches and stuff like that. I'll probably not do too much polishing on the pen. Might maybe just give it a little coat of gloss or something like that. But you don't, it's you don't want to do too much. I like the patina. You know, there's hardly any corrosion on the clips or the or the or the furniture of the pen. It's in excellent shape in my opinion. I'll love if, if I get this thing writing. I'm going to be delighted. I think my the, the person who owns the pens will be delighted. Uh, <laughs> really beautiful pen. That's the great thing about fountain pens. They're made to last. Next one. Let's see what the next one is. I'm just going to randomly pull one out. Ooh. <laughs> beautiful Schaefer. Wow, that's lovely. Green striped celluloid. Uh, lever filler, of course. Gold clip band and lever. Gold plated, probably. Uh... I'm curious, there's a little indentation right there, so I'm wondering if it had originally had a white dot here. I'll look 
I haven't really done a lot of research on online yet. I'll, if you know what this pen is, let me know. Save me some time looking. Nice clear imprint there. It doesn't really say which model it is or anything like that. Beautiful chatoyance in this pen. It's like you're looking in through the surface and seeing the refraction of light. It's dancing almost every time you turn it. It's just beautiful. These old celluloid pens, man, <laughs> I love them. But yeah, as you turn it, you can just see how that color dances. And of course, your typical beautiful Schaefer nib. Nice feed. Nice little ink window right there. Or what appears to be similar to an ink window. You know, latex sack inside, of course, probably. So, you know, the ink window is more decoration than anything. Uh, just gives it a lovely amber. A little bit of decoration right there. <laughs> Nib's in pretty good shape. Needs a little cleanup. Some old dried ink. Feeds in pretty good shape too. Once again, just cleaning up, washing, soaking it in water. Just being gentle, cleaning it up. That's what it's going to need. Body though, doesn't need any work, I'd say. It doesn't Maybe just a little bit of cleaning. There's hardly a scratch on this pen. The, the threads still hold very well, you know. Um, so that's in good shape. One little thing is there is a little in right there. You can see it, which makes me wonder if this is a white dot right, that has been removed or fallen off or scraped off. Somebody might have been picking at it at one time. No teeth marks. Nothing like that. Lovely pen. Lovely pen. <laughs> what else do we have? Oh, yeah. This lovely little jade uh, pen. Probably a, at the time would be sold as a woman's pen. It's not a clip, but there's a little sort of a lanyard uh, attachment at the top. So there was probably hanging on a chain or a, a cord around someone's neck could have been used by a nurse maybe or something like that um, the threads are on the cap they are they still hold but they are a little loose but otherwise it's in good shape i'm not too sure what this brand is wall Evershart, maybe i'm going to have to research it um an interesting little black band right here. A um, bit of brassing on the, on the little part at the top. And there is just ever so slight evidence of a pattern on the ball of the lever, but it's worn out. Um, makes me wonder if there might have been a logo or something there. It's not really any imprint on the belt, on the barrel or the cap anywhere that tells me what this is. Um, it almost looks like a waterman's nib. Once again, I haven't really gone too deep into this yet. We'll find out what that is. Nice little feed. Excellent shape otherwise, you know. But once again, I'll have to get it apart, get the old sack out, get all the old ink out of it. Um, spend some time with it. I don't want to do any damage to it. So just as when you're working with an old pen, sometimes you just have to go very slowly. And if you can't get it apart, sometimes it's best just to leave it. Um, I wonder if there was at some time a band down here. There's a, a line that I can see in the celluloid around here. And I wonder if there was a, a, was a little thin band there at one point. It's gone now. Maybe it never was, never did have that. But I'll do some research, do some imaging searches. But if once again, if you know what this is, let me know. 
I'm leaning towards a wall ever sharp, but I could be wrong, okay? <laughs> if you, but if you know, let me know. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, another little Waterman's. This is a very pretty one. Kind of a grayish striped celluloid with little red stripes throughout it. Gold plated. An interesting clip. Uh, interesting cap. I, I wonder if there was a piece that's gone from the top, but I don't think so. I think it was intended to look like that. Very tiny little clip. This would also at the time be referred to probably as a woman's pen. Very small purse pen. Um, now this one unfortunately has some damage to the tines. There's just one tine is slightly broken on this tip. So there's a little bit of tipping gone. You can it's when I rub my finger on it, it's sharp. Uh, I'll still try to clean it up as best I can, find out what it is. Might even try to search around online and see if there's any, what a nib would cost to replace it. Um, the other option, and this might sound like a sacrilege, is maybe try to find a modern nib of that size that might fill in for now. I would still save the old nib, but I, I, I have actually done that in the past. Uh, I have a, a Waterman's very similar vintage and size, and I didn't like the nib on it, and I replaced it with a Caveco Sport nib, oddly enough, and it works lovely for now. And if I ever come across the nib, I, uh, uh, you know, a nib that I can replace the Caveco with, I'll put it on. The threads are still very good. You know, it catches, it doesn't fall off. So other than the broken tine, this is still in very good shape. Once again, it would be a little sack. It would be a very small little sack, but you can just trim them to fit. Uh, I'll be interested in seeing when I take it apart how good it is inside. Still in great shape, though, except for the broken nib. It's beautiful. I wonder, actually, if, if I can do a little grinding and tinkering with the nib and see if I can make a a stub out of it. Anyway, I'll figure that out. <laughs> what else do we have? One last pen. Oh yeah. Another Waterman's, kind of another striped uh, green celluloid. I'm recognizing a theme here. Whoever owned these pens really liked green. <laughs> uh, very similar actually identical clips this one's silver this one's gold plated um the threads on this one are uh, a little stripped but otherwise when you put it on gently it still holds so the cap doesn't fall off but you don't want to tighten it too much so there that's a little bit of damage there body's in excellent shape very small little lever interesting so there's a uh, yeah just a little lever and it's springy so i think this one oddly enough is actually in fairly good shape inside there's probably once again a an old latex sack that i'm going to have to get out i'm very familiar with doing that bit of brassing like the little bit of a discoloration on the on the band and the clip i could probably do a little cleaning up on that just careful but you don't want to do too much you don't want to do damage as you do it Sometimes it's nice just to leave the patina. And there's some dried ink on the on the nib, but that's easy to get off. The nib's in good shape. If anything, maybe one of the tines is slightly out of alignment. That can be fixed fairly straightforwardly. Uh, once again, I'll take it all apart, clean up the nib, clean the feed, reset the feed into the section. Um, I'm guessing it's friction fit, a little bit of careful water, maybe a bit of heat on it, always being careful not to do any damage as I do it. But yeah, absolutely gorgeous pens. I love old pens. Man, they're so nice. So yes, whoever had these pens, um, the person who owns them now, they she believes they were in her mother's things. 
Um, so I'm going to try to find out the exact models, the years, the and some history of the pens, mainly, you know, uh, what models, of course, and what years. But yeah, so whoever owned these originally loved green, and you, yeah, they're as you can see, beautiful little pens. I'm very happy to get to spend some time with them. Uh, and I hope to be able to get at least a couple of them working for, for the owner and then just carefully work on the others. <clears throat> anyway, I hope you had a nice day and I'm uh, really looking forward to experimenting with these pens, getting to know them. And uh, if you have any information about them, let me know in your comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I'll talk soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.